had a very interesting day. Uh, now we're back. So let's go into it. You might be asking questions or wondering. As we proceed forward here. About Skip Bayless. Undisputed. One of the top shows on Fox, Fox Sports 1. Well, she's going into her maternity leave. And she will soon be leaving the show. Because she's going to be covering a lot of duties and missing a lot of days. She already wasn't working Fridays because, because of her contract with Fox Sports, this was not really her job. She had a contract with Fox Sports that lets her cover various events and her doing Olympics and all of these different things. She was not going to be available to be on the show. Uh, Skip Bayless did not hire Jenny Taft to be on the show. Now, the blow up that everybody saw on TV is just fails in comparison as it was a build up that had been going on for a while on the show. Skip only cares about undisputed. That is all he cares about. It's all he's vested in. Everything goes into the show. So as you've seen when him and Shannon Sharp has these debates and you see Skip just lose it and blow up, even on Shannon Sharp, he does that even worse off the camera. When things aren't going right, Skip Bayless will blow up on the staff. He will blow up on the tech crew and make people not want to work with him. Now, Jenny Taft, being a moderator, was not going to be like Joy Taylor. Joy was different. Joy was a little more... Joy was a little bit more reluctant to get involved or go into a situation where she would get into a verbal back and forth. She was more in favor of Skip on most of the debates. But she would very rarely her personal feelings has something to do with domestic violence. If it's domestic violence, oh, let's get Joy Taylor. <laughs> Other than that, Joy's speaking engagements were very small, to say the least. So the, to, I actually made a video saying, hey, why don't we get more speaking arrangements for Joy Taylor? <laughs> they started putting some actual, you know, things in motion that maybe Joy should speak in more. And she did. And I said, oh, my God. All right. I get it. I see why y'all don't have her speaking more. She wasn't as polished as she is like today, especially with her confidence being on te national television like that, live. It didn't come off good. <laughs> but Joy is young, so she has a lot of acting ideas and she does a lot of videotaping and dancing and all of these things. And sometimes, you know, people just not in the mood that early in the morning to be that chipper and that energetic. And 
you know, she was gonna get Skip on there one day and Skip was like not having it. And he lashed out at Joy. He later apologized for it, but he just didn't think, like he just didn't understand this new young age of technology, plus he was getting ready and prepping for the show. There was a lot of engagements that happened where Skip would belittle Joy. And in the middle of the show, or they'll go to a commercial break, he would lay in the joy really bad and go, aren't you the damn moderator? Then moderate. He said that so many times banging on the table. So and she'll go, he would skip, skip, skip. That's not necessary. She got it. Okay. So Shannon would always come to the defense because Skip has a temper and goes really hot. Jenny Taff <clears throat> was the only one to ever stand up to Skip. Carrie Champion, <clears throat> in fear of her job, she just left the show. When they were on ESPN, a lot of people thought it was Stephen A. Smith that drove her away, but it was really Skip Bales. Skip drove her away. And that's how Molly ended up coming into the fold. The belittling of Carrie Champion, her being opinionated. Skip is old school. You know, he believes a woman should look good, sit there and not having too much to say, and just smile. He does not empower women doing anything <laughs> besides that. So the carry champion just kept it classy and just said, I'm leaving um, first take. She thanked everybody for the opportunity and the time she had there. Joy Taylor was so depressed at that job, it blindsided Skip. She never told Skip she was even leaving. She had an opportunity to take a job because Colin Collier was looking for a replacement. He didn't even know Jenny Taff, I mean, not Jenny Taff, but Joy Taylor would be interested. And she was like, you got a show you're looking for a replacement? He was like, you're on Undisputed already. Like, she was like, if you got a show? He was like, yeah, if, I didn't know you were available. Yeah, I'll hire you. They had a great rapport. And sure enough, Colin saw them boobs and said, I can get points for each boob. <laughs> each boob will, <laughs> will boost up these ratings through the ceiling. So Ebony came in and filled in when they had a vacation and everybody thought Ebony Williams would take over and Ebony, who's very beautiful, but very intelligent and very opinionated, 
Skip did not sign off on that. And he was like, no, nope, mm -mm. been down this road. This isn't the one. So Jenny Taff will always built in for joy whenever she had one of her, I need to call off work days. I'm not feeling good today, which would always piss Skip off because Joy missed quite a few days. Why Skip is there every day. Now, here's the thing. Joy got to the point where she was walking out and Jenny Tapp was always, now Jenny Tapp is a better moderator than Joy Tell. Hands down. Joy was very new at the job. She's learned it. She's a lot better now than when she first started on uh, Undisputed. Way, she, she relied too much on laptops and information rather than actual notes, which now I think she she understands the importance of having the paper and the notes right in front of you instead of trying to pull stuff up on the PC and the computer all the time. And Jenny came there prepared and she had information right away. So she was very knowledgeable. And it was like, when she was there, it was like a flow of water. It fit, she fit. So Skip was like, yeah, she's great. And everything was great. They had great shows. But more and more as Jenny chime in on subjects or start speaking, Skip would often go off and be like, it's my turn. Then she started to see some of those rage moments of Skip. How he would just go off and get, you know, and Jenny would always keep it professional. Then they would come talk to him like, you know, makeup crew, whatever, like, like, this is nothing. <laughs> like, you've seen nothing yet. Like, this is a normal skip. So, eventually, things were heating up because he would always talk down or make it feel like she has no points there. Like, it doesn't say Jenny Taft nowhere on there. It's just skip and shannon our names are in the title we should we're the ones the people get up in the morning to hear talk no one's getting up in the morning to hear jenny tab you know he made that be known in the most subtlest way i mean the most crudest way rather and you know she lashed out publicly on the air and made all of it public and goes, you know, and this is what, it went to a previous argument that people didn't know about. That came up when she said, you know, despite what you do think, I do have a right to say what I want to say on this show. And Skip says, no, you don't. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> so, you know, the situation was tense. And Skip just got to the point where he don't like her and she just does not like Skip. And it has been bad for a while. And Fox Sports 1 just, the show must go on. So they kept the show rolling. Now, as long as the show was going, nobody was going to care what happened. But again, another situation happened where Skip basically undermined Jenny and cut her off uh, again and went through this whole <laughs> a whole thing where she was going to blow up again and, and Shannon had to calm her down because Jenny's pregnant you know and now this really changes the dynamic so you know HR had to get in there and kind of mediate this thing um, like, look, she's pregnant. We're going to try to transition her off the show, but she's pregnant, Skip. So you're going to have to stand down. Skip refuses to apologize uh, publicly for anything because Skip said, no, she did everything wrong. I did everything right. That's how Skip views it. Don't forget to hit the like button, good people.
and subscribe if you're new. Skip said, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't make it personal. Like, I didn't personally attack the guy. I'm just saying, in my opinion, I didn't say this is the opinion of the rest of the world. I said, in my opinion, I would not want Mike McCarthy to be my head coach because of, you know, fitness-wise or the look. I just don't think he has the look. I didn't compare him to my physique. She did all this. She just blew up and started talking about and no one's in shape like me and all of these things. I never said these things. So Skip went into Human Resources and said, you can go back and watch the tape. I was saying I didn't make anything personal. She made it all personal. But then now she's pregnant. <laughs> so this make this supersedes everything. She's pregnant. Do you want to be the guy who tells the pregnant woman she can't come on the show anymore? No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so it's let's go on business as usual. We go through the show, we go through the notes, and we're just getting through the motions. When this is all said and done, we'll look for replacements and bring someone in. Alex Curry, you've seen her more on the show. They have a good rapport, energy. She's fun time. She's really good. She already has a show that she does in the afternoons. So she normally would fill in in the morning. Really good friends with Joy and uh, Jenny. Great energy. She comes in there and brings her sass to the show, but she's very positive. Skip likes her on the show. Don't really have any too, too much complaints about Alex Curry at all, but how long are they gonna let Skip Bayless continuously go? Jenny had the dog on a uh, baby shower. Skip Bayless does not show up. <laughs> Ernestine had, they sent the gift over from Skip and Ernestine. They sent the gift uh, for the baby. Uh, Shannon Sharp showed up, a lot of people from the staff, because it was like Fox Sports, you know, the Undisputed staff. And Skip Bayless, who runs Undisputed, his show, doesn't even show up. So, all the women start coming out and bonding behind the scenes, talking about, you know, we're standing with Jenny Taff. You know, this has been going on, this bullying by Skip Bayless has been going on for far too long. So, Skip has now done this cleanup job to where he's put this show together to explain his marriage, why he didn't have children. He's trying to show more of his personal life, which he doesn't like to exploit on his show. So doing it here seems to make it easier of a transition when he has the Skip Bayless show, his internet show that he wants to do, which he don't want to do at all, but Ernestine and the rest of his team thinks it needs to fix his image if they learn more about Skip the man and what he goes through. They look at him as just this callous brute that just yells and screams all day every morning on Undisputed rather than a human being. But Skip is like, look, I don't get involved in none of these politics or all this stuff that everyone else does. I have no place for it. I have no time. Don't care enough. All I got is undisputed, and that's all I focus on. That is what my energy goes. I don't have any side duty shows or anything else. Now, Shannon Sharp has been quite successful because he's more personal. You know, Skip is not very personable with, it, with a lot of people, like celebrities and things like that. They don't really like Skip. Shannon is cool with everybody. He's getting an NCAA P award 
you know, and Shannon has great rapport with people. So him doing a show where he gets to interview people that uh, Uncle Shay's on YouTube has gotten very popular and has done great for Shannon Sharp. Now, because of this, this is why Skip has now been like, all right, Skip, you got to do this. Skip don't really care. Skip just wants undisputed and that's it. But now that times are changing, they're going to make Skip toe the line. Because the Me Too and all these movements, they want to come out to Skip. But Skip's old. So you, it's hard to Me Too somebody you can't Me Too. He's not connected to anything. He's not in the entertainment division. You don't see Skip going to all these galas and Skip does not care. So you can't hurt him with cutting him off from celebrities because he's basically cut off from celebrities. He doesn't really care. He's going to talk about him anyway. So you're not going to be able to me too Skip Bayless. You see, when you're already unplugged, there's nothing they could do to you. Oh yeah, she did that. She did that while pregnant. Like maternity leave starts now. She runs and then puts her foot down like skip. <laughs> Uh, everybody's like, oh, she just did skip. It's hilarious. Uh, yes, the super chat works. My cash app is Carcino. Thank you. But the like button is free. There's Okwami. What's up? It's free. There's Okwami. What's up? We the people. Salute. Oh, yeah, this 19th, the Saginaw Stem, buddy. I told you, we done made history now. Already every Tuesday and Thursday, after school program. Less than one year, Kwame. Look at that. Teaching mechanical engineering to these kids. Program already up and running and funding by the people. And they said, no, we can't do it. We got to get this done. We got to get that done. Less than one year is already done. Well, see, Skip Bale is, you see, the thing about Skip is that he put all his focus into his show. Now, they ain't not going to come after Skip, like I told you. Not going to come after Skip because Skip is under contract, and they're going to have to pay Skip out anyway. Plus, he generates a lot of money and, and attention, and plus, that's the flagship show on sports on, uh, Fox Sports 1. So they definitely not finna rock the boat. Skip is old school. They just chalk that up as him being old. Y'all just gonna have to deal with it. But Skip goes nowhere. And that's how they look at it. But all these other women like Carrie Champion, Jamel Hill, and all of them, they seem to wanna cause these stirs, but if it affects their money, they going to toe the line and be quiet. See, Jamel Hill never wanted to rock the boat. She just thought she could talk reckless on Twitter and it didn't affect her job. Once they told her it did and they tried to silence her because Trump wanted her fired for what she was doing because she was trying to serve two masters. You can't do that. When you're supposed to be somebody who used to have, she used to have original thought. They used to be creative and having fun, and now they want to turn into liberals and follow an agenda 
and you're being told what your message is. See, when people tell you what your message is, they send you outside Yeah, they send you outside with the message and then whatever the message is of the day, you got to make yourself believe it. What did I tell y'all was going to happen? Whenever there's always an incident, here comes D.L. Hewley. Then now you got Comedy Hype. When Comedy Hype first came out, they didn't even show their face. They did interviews. You never heard anything from Comedy Hype. But they just came out of nowhere and was getting all these views. And it was like, man, who are these people? Comedy hype. They just came out of nowhere, which they did. Just came out of left field. Then they started hiring people. You start seeing this woman be like the moderator of a show they got on Comedy Hype. Then here come Pierre. And I'm like, hmm. Then they seem to follow a weird agenda. Almost like TMZ. Whenever, when Eminem took that knee, I told y'all, my like, uh-oh, here come D.L. Hewley. Here comes D.L. Hewley. They gonna tell you what it's about. They gonna paint the narrative. I'm like, what did Eminem say? Uh, he didn't say anything. Then it didn't mean nothing. Because if he meant it to be whatever it is, he would have said it. He did that so you would paint the narrative. So he would be the talk. I told y'all that. Well, Skip, Skip is old school, and he do go up, and he blow up off the top. People get upset when they passionate about things. That happens. But they'll let Skip get away with a lot of stuff because he's their flagship program, and they got a lot into him. Now, let's say Shannon Shaw blew up like that. If Shannon Sharp would have blew up on the show like Skip blows up, right? If Shannon does that and just blow up or blow his top, start banging on the table and losing his mind and him and Jenny had it out, would Shannon have been removed off the show or put in suspension? What y'all think? Shannon would be forced to apologize. Shannon would have to come back after a suspension. Didn't we just see that with Whoopi? What did Whoopi say that was so egregious that she had to be suspended for two weeks after apologizing already on her own? When they have said things that were way more damaging and egregious on that show. That was affecting people's pay. People's livelihoods. She tried to tell Monique, like, let me give you some game. How you gonna give me some game? <laughs> You see, it's always people that's towing the line that want to push that narrative. Let me give you some game.
Like, look, I'm in a good position here. Let me give you some game. Just, just play ball. And then down the line, they might feel generous enough to give you something. Boy, I swear, these drivers, young teenage drivers, boy, they don't know what to do. They don't realize a stop sign means stop. They don't mean rolling stop. It means stop. <laughs> the car must come to a complete stop. No, we turn we turn Whoopi Goldberg into what she is. How many times did black people call Whoopi Goldberg ugly? The ugliest person in the world, Whoopi Goldberg. Ooh, Whoopi ugly. Ooh, man, she ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Man, you uglier than Whoopi Goldberg. They make jokes about Whoopi being ugly. She gonna go to the people that don't think she's ugly. Dennis Rodman. Ugh, ugh, he ugly. The worm. He looked like an ugly worm. Ugh, he ugly. What Dennis start doing? Going to the people that didn't think he looked ugly. Then y'all got the gall to get mad at him. <laughs> Y'all the one was saying they ugly. What they supposed to do? Well, it's about lifestyle residencies. People are loyal to their lifestyles. Whatever your surrounding and lifestyle is, you're loyal to that. Whoever's in that circle, that's what you're loyal to. And your moral compass don't seem to want to conform to using your common sense. It's about whatever this lifestyle bubble says is going on this lifestyle bubble be like yeah well i just think it's a little too abrasive you know i think it could have been another way and he'd be like well he's a good person yeah but didn't you think it was abrasive well i'm um, not you saying yeah it was kind of a little abrasive yeah it could have been <laughs> and they changed their whole tr train of thought now kanye west is an idiot you know Take no questions about it. He's a very smart idiot. He's passionate. He doesn't think well sometimes. But he knows one thing. He's unplugged from what everybody else tries to plug him into. He's not trained to follow the same path everyone else is. Especially when they're trying to come with the brainwash with these Democrats. What he tried to tell y'all about common is true. What he tried to tell y'all about the guy that plays the piano, the one with the apple in his mouth, who wife boss him around, Christy T, John Legend, it's true. They weak. Weak men who played the political role they going with the liberals because the liberals are going to pay money. They're going to give them what they want. They want to be at these Met Galas and wear dresses. Men in dresses. Oh, man, that's great. What is that doing for you? 
Westbrook, his game then fell off the day he put on that dress. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. His game fell off the moment he put on that dress. Yeah, I'm over here where the Blackhawks players live and some of the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, every home over here is 1.5 and up. Crazy design homes, but the property value here is through the roof. Uh, they filmed a movie out here. Tom Cruise, one of his first movies, Risky Business. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. filmed a movie out here. Um, just a little bit of it. The rest was in Indiana. Um, Oh uh, no, this is, <laughs> I don't live out here. I live close, but not out here. These are different level. This is where doctors and lawyers and all of them, <laughs> mostly the athletes, they stay out in this area. And now I gotta go meet some people and go handle some business. So that's why I'm out this way. But, uh, yeah, some of these homes are designed crazy. So, White Howard, you're a fool. That house looked like a dog owns like 20 rooms. It don't even make sense to have that house out there. Like, I'm just thinking of the taxes alone. It is cray cray. Uh, well, we have to understand a couple of things. Let's look at it from the perspective of what you want to see. How many of you actually listen to the Democratic Party? And it's not to attack one party or another. I'm just saying the majority of the people who are African-American, we seem to vote Democratic. That is fair to say, right? Now, Illinois is a democratic state. Let that sink in. Illinois has been a democratic state for, I can't even tell you how long it's been, <laughs> but longer than I've been alive, it has been a democratic state. Now, this is the land of Lincoln. That's what it's called. Illinois is known as the land of Lincoln. Now, we vote Democratic seem to be every year, right? And Democrats 
control everything here in Illinois? Why we don't have anything in Illinois? Since we're voting Democratic. Right? Since we're voting Democratic and we're getting the guys elected that we want, why you don't have anything? It's a simple question. Why you don't have anything in all these years of voting Democratic in Illinois? What has it done for you? Being an African-American person and you are the, the majority of us vote Democratic. I'm just saying, what has it done for you? This is a Democratic state Every year you crying about getting things done and we want to elect this guy so we can get things done. What have you gotten done? What programs have been put in place for your children, your future? Taxes, the whole nine. Maybe if you threaten to affect these people's pay and saying, hey, we not finna elect y'all no more then maybe here come them programs. See, people seem to do more for you when you threaten to take away things more than giving them something. See, when they, when they have the threat of losing something, it seems to be more greater than them being given something. Now you've given them the gift of putting them in a position where they have all this power. And how do they thank you for it? They took advantage of you. Right? They took everything from you. That's how they paid you back. You gift, you gift them with your votes, they take. You gift them with your votes, and they just keep taking, doing nothing for you. Now you want something done, you threaten to take it away. And then they'll maybe start doing some things. Independent mind, independent thought. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I'm an independent thinker. I want the best person to be in there for the job, no matter what they supposed to be representing but I'm not going to vote for you and you ain't got my vote because you're a Democrat. That just doesn't make any sense. So if anybody thinking I'm trying to take people away from the Democratic Party, no, I'm telling you to think. That's all. <laughs> think. <laughs> Uh, Daly Jr. is a good mayor depending on where you live. If you lived in Bridgeport or somewhere over there, he was an outstanding mayor for you. But if you were anyone who was black, Mayor J Daly Jr. was not your kind of mayor. <laughs> if you lived in the city of Chicago, he tore down the projects, put those people in areas that they don't live, and caused a war with the people that was forced in there and started gentrifying the uh, downtown area because he wanted to get the Olympics. Something that Los Angeles did that Nipsey lost his life over. 
just so they can get the Olympics in 2028. And they put all these fake champions around. Dodgers, Gator Lakers, pandemic championships, just Gator Rams a championship. Same thing they did here, White Sox championship. 2005, they spent all the money renovating all of it just so they could do it. Well, Harold Washington, Chicago's first black mayor, Mayor Byrne, I was too young to really know, but only thing I knew about Mayor Byrne was the Byrne Fest. That was it. Harold Washington was a decent mayor, but he never really had a long tenure be before he mysteriously had a heart attack and died. He went and dug up the ground for a project that most people were fighting to not happen. And he went back to his office, had a heart attack, and died. Then led to the Democratic War. And the Democratic War of who was going to take over his seat. Well, let's just say the battle of corruption. You want to know people who are corrupt in power and they don't want to lose that position of what Harold had. And they had to get another black mayor in there right away. Because if they just stuck a white mayor in there, like the guy who was the temporary mayor, he's like, I don't want this job. You know, the white guy was in there because people were really upset. Like, man, they killed Harold. You know, so that was floating around the city of Chicago. So they had to get a black mayor in there quick. So they had a special election where everybody wanted Timothy Evans to be the mayor. And he was, all right, I'm going to be the mayor. I'm Timothy Evans. Everybody loves me. I'm GQ Fly. So... Everybody thought he was going to get it. A lot of people didn't trust him at the Evans. They held a special election, and Eugene Sawyer won. Everybody was, who? Like, yeah, we had a vote, and we we elected Eugene Sawyer. <laughs> who? <laughs> Eugene Sawyer. He's going to be the mayor. So he held it down as long as he could, but he wasn't going to stand a chance when Daley Jr. decided to run. But Timothy Evans was pissed that he got basically sideswiped for the job. And now Timothy Evans is a judge. Now he's a judge. A Illinois, one of the top judges in Illinois. I went for jury duty one time. They never called me back for jury duty, ever. They would never call me back. My name has been permanently removed. But, and I, I got myself permanently removed. I think I've told you this story before. I knew how to get myself out. They, they don't even think to call me again. I thought it was fun, but I, I didn't, I knew I didn't want to be there for a whole week of a trial. But Timothy Evans was on the video telling people, I was like, that's Timothy Evans. He's a judge now. Oh, man, people in trouble. So it was a big trial that was going to, you know, be formed due to this. Yeah, I'm right Michael Jordan house again. It's funny how Jordan lived away from the other NBA players. 
Like, they stay back there. Scotty Pippen lived back there. Like, his old house is back there. Jordan stay over here. <laughs> Jordan, like, I'm staying over here. Y'all stay over there. Oh, they got an accident. Well, Jordan just down the street. You know, that's just how he got down. <laughs> Mike was down the street and he wasn't gonna care. Mike, Mike was like, look, y'all stay over there. I'm gonna stay over here. The area I was just at when I was showing the home, that's where Scotty lived. Scotty got a house over there. Michael stay over here. Well, he stayed over here when he was winning championship. I mean, the house should be just a museum, period. Oh, the person that bought the house or whatever, they still got the 23 on the gate. Nobody going, <laughs> nobody going not take that. Would, would you take down 23 off your gate if you bought Michael Jordan house? That 23 going to stay out there forever. The Jordan house. Well, they made modifications. This is the guest house. They got that a little lit up. Let y'all see it. It's got the purple lights at nighttime on the side of it. The little guest house. Uh, they spent money modifying the house already. They spent money modifying the home already because um, here's the situation. It's a old, it's an old mansion. You got to remember, this is a 19 like 92 mansion. Do you know Wi-Fi and all these things have come into play? <laughs> And Michael Jordan had to, he wanted more privacy from the media and the press. So he had trees, like they put more trees in there to give him more privacy. But now they've had most of those trees removed. Biden's gonna get us nuclear bombed. Nobody's gonna get nuclear bombed anymore. People need to stop with that. It's too much money to be made. You bomb somebody when you can't make money off of.
Why would you want to bomb people you can make money off of? How you gonna make money that way? Russians make money over here. This is a distribution hub. <laughs> Everybody bring all their stuff over here for us to buy. We don't make it, we don't make stuff anymore. We just distribute. What's up, Mr. Bailey? <laughs> I told you, that's the NBA's plan. The NBA's major plan NBA's major damage or their major plan that they want to go through is they want to expand worldwide. They want to be able to have games across the globe. <coughs> they want an international team. If it wasn't for COVID, they were going to do this NBA Europe where they want to try to engage European teams to have like an NBA league and send players over there to do like a summer league. This is what the market is going towards. In the next five years, Luka Doncic and these guys will be running the NBA. Luka Doncic will be your new LeBron James. They're going to build this whole league around Luka. Watch what I tell you. They're going to be winning championships. Well, they just wasted tens of millions of dollars to try to get India in basketball with it, with in, and put all those marketing dollars into India. That was um, kind of goofy. They sent Kevin Durant out to India to market this, and he was just like, you know, like I'm exhausted. I'm trying to get through the season, you know, like, but my goodness. You know, it was cool to come here and do this, but that's like cricket is the NBA don't they just they just want to tap into the market. Any of people here, they they like a lot of them like the Bulls and everything else, but when a cricket game come on, you think they finna give a damn about the NBA? You just don't know how powerful cricket is and how long of a game cricket is. Uh, that's like put, watching an a Indian movie. Indian movies are like six hours long. <laughs> that's why they, they, they dress for, they in their pajamas, they bring blankets when they go to the movie. They getting ready for bed. All oh, they movies got intermissions. If a movie's four hours long, that's considered a short. <laughs> All right, they have Indians that play basketball, but the NBA is never going to impact the market like they think they are. 
So you're going to be throwing away tens of millions of dollars to try to market internationally. You're spending all that resources marketing to someone where you're not going to make a dent. And the reason why you're not going to make a dent is because everything is set in place for how they want to, you know, go about dealing with sports. Because they have a certain amount of time that they have that they can spend watching sports or television. They're more about education. So they can't sit there and dwell and be on social media 24-7 like the majority of us. Most of them are studying to be doctors and lawyers. So it was cool to have, it was a good look for the NBA to say, hey, we're trying, but you're throwing away millions and millions of dollars into resources into something that's not gonna happen for you. So, anyway, we've done an hour straight. Uh, we've talked about a variation of topics. So, we're done.